everybody. I'm just cleaning my mat in case Hilda sees that it's not exactly clean. Um, right. Today we have an exciting, easy peasy project. Just what we all need, I would say. Um, this is an idea, well, inspired, let's say, by... Let's just try that. I don't want that on there. Um, it's an idea inspired by two very talented ladies. One is Carol Tinson, and you can find her on YouTube. Um, well worth seeking out. Um, a very down to earth lady, some great ideas. And the other is Norma from Crafted by Norma. Uh, again, another Northern girl and just... She, the idea she has at the moment, she's doing a wonderful series, um, sort of gothic-y type series, um, which isn't kind of what I'm normally drawn to, but I like it when she does it. So that's Carol Tinson on YouTube and Norma on Crafted by Norma. Go and look them up, guys. I'm sure you'll like them. And this idea is a bit of Norma and a bit of Carol and a bit of me. <laughs> and so this is what I've come up with. It's a little easy peasy envelope journal. Okay, so I've just tied mine around with some beautiful satin ribbon actually. Uh, so let's, this is what we are aiming to make, guys. And we will make it. <laughs> so here we are. It's quite small by the standards that I normally do at any rate. I'll tell you what it measures. It measures. Uh, six and a half just over six and a half by five so you know given that i usually deal in full sheets of a4 and full file folders etc this is little for me but it fits really nicely into your hand it's lovely and on the front you can see the edith holden foxgloves a perennial favorite of mine i love them and i've just put this one on the top that i've embossed i don't know if you can see oh it's Oh, keep going. And there you are. You can see it's shiny. I've embossed it in clear embossing powder. Some lace down the spine. And then you open it up. And there's a couple of Edith Holden pictures there. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have the Edith Holden CD <coughs> excuse me, set. <coughs> excuse me. So that means that I can I have I can print these out innumerable times. Because as you know, the Edith Holden books themselves are copywritten, so don't photocopy them. It's against the law. Um, so this is one envelope, and in it is another Edith Holden picture on a little um, card that we'll come to later, and an eyelet and a butterfly uh, charm there. And then uh, a page with a, a tag in it, and a little bit of journaling in there same 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 card in there with a charm on the edge um journaling card tummy tuck with a journaling card and in that envelope same same idea um this one a corner pocket with a, a fussy cut of common broom and the uh, journaling card is broom as well so I think it is anyway. Uh, so that goes in there nicely. A little envelope and a uh, tag. Quite like that tag actually. Um, and a journaling card in there. They've all got lined paper on the back, so you, you know they are journaling. So there is a, a bit of journaling in here. That just slips into there with the charm there. Um, then we've got this one, which is a tummy tuck with a um, fussy cut of a chaffinch and chaffinch out of the book I love her text, it's gorgeous and this little card here little sweet little card just fits into there some more journaling coffee stained paper and then on the back we've got uh, a corner tuck but upside down one 
uh, this journaling card with Kingfisher. This poor Kingfisher, he gets overlooked so often in the Edith Holden books because on the back of him is something much prettier. And so everybody opts to cut out the prettier image on the other side and leave the Kingfisher. But I've decided his time has come. So I've fussy cut him out and I've put him onto this um this text is actually from Nature Notes, Edith Holden, Nature, Country Diary Nature Notes. And the text isn't the same. It's rather more just an ordinary sort of typewriter text. But the words are very um, in keeping because it's all about Edith, etc. So I've, I've used that. I've stenciled on it with my rose stencil that you've seen loads of times. <clears throat> Does me good service that. Stuck the Kingfisher on and just uh, copied the not copied, I have taken the word Kingfisher out of the book and stuck that on there and it just fits nicely into that uh, tuck spot and then right at the back we've got another uh, card with uh, journaling on the back and a charm and that just fits into there like so. So when, the, when it's all shut like that you can see all the charms down the side and they look really pretty. Yeah, um, the back cover is just music paper and that's the lace from the spine. I've just gone around it with some ink, but it doesn't really need much. It's just the back cover and I don't like putting things on the back cover because they get caught. Uh, so I've just left that flat and plain and there's the front. So that's it. That's what we're going to do, except the twist is we're going to do it for Christmas. <laughs> so. Roll call. Roll call. Let's have a roll call. Let's have a roll call. Terry. Hi, Terry. Jean. Hi, Jean. Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Mabel. Hello, Mabel. Helen. Hello, Helen. Jean. Hello, Jean again. <laughs> Shaz. Hiya, Shaz. I hope you're feeling a little better today. Jania. Hi, Jania. Smiley Jania. <laughs> do, 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 do. Kerry. Hi, Kerry. Ke Kerry. 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 Kerry Roberts. Hello, Kerry. Rose. Hi, Rose. Mike S. Hello, Mike. Cindy. Hi, Hi. Cindy. I haven't seen you for a while, Cindy. Nice to see you. Andressa from Brazil. Hello, Andressa from Brazil. Wow. Benice. Hello, Benice. Jan. Jan. Oh, hello, Jan. 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 Yep, Jan. Jen. Hello, Jen. Hope you had a nice date night. Sharon. <coughs> Sharon. <coughs> Davis. Hello, Sharon. Ingrid Appleby. Hello, Ingrid. Camellia Craft Design. Hello, Julie. Amanda Roberts. Hello, Amanda. I think that's it. If I missed you, shout out. Well, how nice. Give everybody a wave. Because <laughs> I know I know how shaz and people get upset if I don't wave. <laughs> so he's waving to you all in one go. Right, okay then, let's get cracking with the packing. Even Bob says hello. Yeah, even Bob's chiming in. So what we need for this, well, what I've used are these brown craft envelopes. Uh, I got them in a pack of 50 from the range and they were a fiver. You can use any envelopes. And in fact, I was very tempted, I don't know where I've put them now. I've got some massive... Um, red ones that I was nearly tempted by and then I had these yeah twice that size they were and I thought I'll do that and then I thought no just keep it sensible so I had these ones that I was also tempted by but I couldn't find enough of them so I've saved myself some stupidity um, and I'm going for this size which makes this size journal and honestly I think that's a, just a nice little size so the other thing that you will need is these. Well, I say you need them. These are all curly. I wish they weren't. Um, it's these and they're called plain guide cards from, I bought them from Staples online. Um, they're not expensive 
and they're in keeping with a sort of craft card look of the envelopes. Um, but if you haven't got these, and I appreciate that, you know, obviously not everybody has, just take a piece of card in, I think they're six by four. Just slightly less than four, that is, and six. So it's six by slightly less than four. Um, so take yourself a piece of card in those dimensions and just, if you've got a tag punch or whatever, punch it out and affix it onto there and then stick your paper over the top and it won't be any different except you can have it in whatever colour you want to, whatever colour card you've got. If you haven't got a tag punch or these, then just cut out a square and, and fold it over on itself and you'll have a tag. So don't be put off by the fact that you might not have these. They're nice to have, but they are by no means essential. So for this, we need five envelopes. So I have five here. And what you need to do is, well, no, you don't need to do it. What I've chosen to do is ink around them just to make them look slightly more sort of vintagey. So I've got one more still to do. I'll take my inking board and I'm just going to open it. I don't know why, but I just do. Um, right. Yeah, I've got vintage photo in evergreen bow lid, <laughs> which isn't the easiest. But honestly, I've got so many beautiful ink pads and Vintage photo which must be one that we use more often than anything. I um I haven't got one. It's just not a big one anyway. Yeah, that's vintage photo. I was just testing, I didn't want it to come out the wrong colour. So just ink up the edges. As as dark or as light as you want to go. Um you know, this is the first of the sort of choices where you have input. Well, no, I mean, you can use any colour envelope that you want as well. So that's a choice. So right from the word go, you can change this um, into being what you want it to be. I, oh, excuse me, itchy nose again. It would be quite nice in, in a lighter colour envelope, I think. So I'm just going around the edge and you don't have to be really tidy about this because you're going to be sticking something over it. So just a bit of colour on that edge is all I'm after. I don't think there's too much ink left in that one either. Anyway, we're nearly there. There we are. And all I'm going to do is take some walnut stain, uh, which is this one, and my walnut stain sponge. And I'm just going to go over the absolute outside. You needn't do the long side because uh, it's going to get chopped off, but just the, those two sides. Hilda's there. Hilda! Uh, I think I missed her on the first run through. Oh, missed Hilda? How dare you! Um, right, so now I have got five of these that I've inked up and they're ready to rock. Okay, five in total. So now we need to stick them together. I'm going quite quick today, aren't I? This is because I think, I know these words will come crashing down around my ears, but I think I'm quite well prepared today. <laughs> Famous last words, eh? Right, so you get your first envelope and you open it up with the flap pointed towards the right. Okay, like that. Then you take one of your next ones. So that's one and I've got four left. Okay, so take the next one, open it up and just fold that flap back. You don't need to crease it for its life. Just fold it back a little bit. And the glue I am choosing to use today is Colal, this Miranda stuff. Miranda and Candice, say hi. Hi, Miranda. Hi, Candice. Thanks for popping on. 
Um, yeah, I've chosen to use Colal. We've always had Colal and Mr. F always uses it for uh, bookbinding purposes. And I tried it once. It was really runny and thought never again. But actually, I was watching Julie at Camellia Crafts Designs and she uses Colal a lot. So I thought, oh, I'll give that another go. Maybe I've been a bit dismissive of it. So I've given it another go and I really, really like it. So um, Mr. F has decanted some into one of my lovely little bottles that Lynn bought me. Um, and I've been using it all, all week and it's, it's doing doing the job great. So, so you just put your glue along the edge of that point, like so. And then just on the flap side of the the crease line. So just on the flap side there. And then you hold it like that and put put it where you think it should roughly sort of go and then fold it over. And this is the important bit. You need to get these lined up properly. And this is the beauty of the collal. It doesn't dry on you instantly. So you have got time to flap about here a little bit. So get those exactly right and then stick that sticky bit down. Because that's the critical bit. Okay, so that's two envelopes we've used so far. Now using the next one, same thing. Open it out, just fold it back on itself like that. Get your glue, go around the edge. I mean, I appreciate that you might need to watch this just more than once, maybe just for your first time, just to get the hang of where things go. And then this just on the flap side of that line that you've just creased. Like so. And then you put it down like that, glue side down like that. Put it where you think it looks about right. Fold it, oops, told you Colal didn't stick instantly. Fold it back on itself like so and straighten these up so they are absolutely straight and then press it down. I think they're okay. There we go. So same again. After you've made a couple of these, you, you really know what you know where things go. At the minute, it just all seems a bit what what goes where, but you'll soon get the hang of it. Same procedure. So you turn it upside down like that. So the glue side is going onto here. Place it roughly where you think is about right. Fold it over. Get these edges really, really straight and level, like so. Press it down firmly. And then we're on to the last one. There we go, I'll put my lid on my glue. Ellie Dawn says hi. Hi Ellie. She says it's 6 20 in the morning. Then. Oh my goodness me. Uh, Leslie M says good morning. Morning. <laughs> I've just had my lunch and actually it was a late lunch so so that's there and once again square it up exactly right so you're happy that it's perfectly square and fold that down. There we go.
now then. I'm quite happy with that, I think. All right. Maybe could do with coming out a little bit to do. As I say, that's the beauty of this collar glue. You really do get time to think with it. Um, and it doesn't leave lines, you know, how, how the, some of the other glues, when you put it on, it dries so much that it's actually in lines by the time you put it down. And you always feel those lines forever and a day. Right, so I think that's pretty good, pretty square. Now then, the next thing is that this flap is going to get folded over to there. I mean, that's no great surprise. You worked that one out, hadn't you? Um, but this is kind of going to be the spine down here. And it probably needs just a little bit of strengthening because this is only craft paper. And craft paper is relatively strong. But we are going to sew signatures into it. So we really need um, any added strength that we can give it. Now, I uh, have two solutions for you. One is Tyvek that I use um, and I just stick a narrow bit down there. Nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly acceptable to do that. The other thing, and I haven't tried it yet, but both Carol Tinson and Norma suggested that this micropore tape um, does the job. It's strong, it's supple, it's flexible. So I'm going to give that a try. Now, I've bought mine from Boots the Chemist, um, but apparently you can buy it from the pound shop. I don't know. I don't know about that. I just can tell you that Norma says it works. So let's assume it works. So I'm just, apparently it goes fairly sort of transparent when you put it on, which in this case doesn't really matter because you're not going to see it. But there are some occasions when you'd really like, like what you put on to be transparent. So that's all I can tell you guys because I've never used it before. Let's hang on to that bit. So I'm just going to put this under here. This is fiddly. Right, under there, like so. Along that spine. I'll come back to that and see if I can straighten it up. And along to there. Is that the end? Yeah, there. And tuck that in under there. Right, so that just needs tucking in under there. In a bit less drunken, haphazard manner. Right, okay, so there we are. We've got the micropore on. It can't do any harm, is all I would say. And you know, it's probably perfectly fine. So I'll stick that back onto there. And I'm just going to trim off the, uh, the little edges of the micropore. I think micropore must be a brand name, actually, um, because Boots sell it as microporous tape. So I'm thinking that micropore is an is actual brand name. And I don't, I'm pretty sure you don't have to go and buy the actual branded micropore let's get rid of that little bit in there okay right then so the next thing to do <laughs> it's quite sticky is to fold this over now just take it and gently gently fold it over like that okay just a bit of pressure on it just like that and you'll see when you fold it back you've got a line where you folded it to and that's your spine line now you want to put quite a bit of glue in there so let's attend to that quite a bit of glue in there to support that spine and to attach the envelopes to the spine so there's a good lot of glue in there and then just around the top as before Right, so you want to press this over, but don't don't press this down 
really tight because otherwise it'll it'll be attached to that and you'll never get it shut it won't shut properly so just give it a little bit of leeway not ultra tight see that's see it wants to pull that, that one up you, it will do that but you don't want it really really taut so it's standing up at 90 degrees so there we are that's that glued down so take your bone folder now and go along that spine so as you're making a proper proper spine of it so there can you see that i have a spine that's the back that i've just stuck down and here's the front so i've got one two three four five okay now the thing about collal is it is a wet glue and it doesn't dry instantly and it does take time to dry so i'm going to set this one aside i have other plans for it and reach for the one that i did earlier <laughs> told you i was organized today <laughs> um so let's just see if this one's worked Yeah, looks fine. Sticking to itself. Yeah, there we are. And that's the spine on that one. Same as the other one. Right, so. Brilliant start. Something will definitely go wrong. Let's have a drink and celebrate that nothing's gone wrong so far. Right, so what I have done is, Jen was saying, do you ever use, do you ever go back and use a, a kit that you've already bought, a digital kit? And there are certain kits that I always go back and use. The one I probably use most is Grandma's Attic from My Porch Prints. It is, I think, the definitive shabby chic kit, uh, along with all the ephemera that comes with it and whatever. If you wanted to do shabby chic for the rest of your life, I'm pretty sure you could do it with Grandma's Attic. But I really like this Holly Jolly from uh, Pink Monarch Prints. I particularly like this one, if you remember. So what I've done is I've printed out some sheets of paper and cut out the right size. I've inked around them with my um, Distress Ink and Candied Apple. And I've just gone around the absolute edge with um, Walnut Stain just to darken it that bit. Then I've sewn around it um, with red cotton, just a straight stitch. You can either choose to sew or not. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's aesthetics only. It's not lending anything else to it. And I'm going to stick one of these to each of our, what are now, pages. Um, actually, before, no, I'll do that first. Um, so there's another choice for you. You know, what style are you going to do? And are you going to do them all the same? Or are you going to have different um, papers on each page? Which would look really, really nice, I think. So... I have decided for the other one that's now drying, this one, that I'm going to do a kind of more shabby effect. So I'm going to, this is the pink from, remember I bought three kits from chapter one all at once. I bought shabby patchwork, strawberry fields and sugared almonds. I think this is from sugared almonds, but I tend to use them all uh, together at the same time because they all fit in so well together. So I've printed those pages out to go on here. I haven't sewn around them yet, but I, I will do. And they'll all go on there. And that's, I've gone around that with Victorian velvet, which is the colour to die for. Uh, and just around the absolute outside edge with the walnut stain, just to make sure it stands out from the envelope. So that's the idea for that one. Um, this one, however, they all need to be stuck in. Um, oh, 
Mr. F's getting his glasses on usually means something's afoot. A brew. Yeah, a brew. A brew would be lovely. So I'm going to use my collar once again. Um, not too near the edges, but not too far away. Just that Goldilocks period <gasps> where you're not too far and you're not too near. So if you want to get cracking on this uh, today, so as tomorrow you're up to the same place as me, you need to have all your papers stuck in and then we'll do the, I'll show you the journaling cards in a sec that go in between the, the envelopes. Right, so let's get this on here. Oh, it's so pretty, that paper. It is just so pretty. I love it. it. It is directional, though, I should tell you, if you're planning on using this. There are roses that grow up, so make sure your rose is going up, up your page. So, there we are. It is my plan <coughs> to do a live every day until we've got this journal absolutely finished. So you're going to be sick of the sight of me, but at the end of it, you're going to have a journal. Um, but, we, you know, we need to crack on. So I'll just put the next one on. As I say, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll have five envelopes that are the same in your stash somewhere. You know, there can be envelopes for gift cards. As long as they're the same size, they're going to work. Next week, we've got an envelope project for envelopes that are different sizes. Because you may recall when I cleaned up, when I had that tidy a week or so ago, I found literally hundreds of envelopes, literally hundreds. Uh, so I'm on a quest to use them up. Um, so, you know, for the foreseeable future, we're going envelope crazy. So you can see how nice it would be if you actually use different papers. I, I'm just using the same one throughout. April Garcia says hi from Texas. Hi April. Thanks for joining us. I hope I inspire you to uh, get your crafting out and get cracking today. Can't beat it. You cannot beat crafting. Terry says, Mr. F, will they be on at the same time? I wasn't here for the conversation. Were you talking about lives or something? Oh, yes. I said that we would finish this live, no matter how many lives it was. Ah. Somebody said, bring on the lives. Oh, this Jen. <laughs> oh, never tired. Oh, you're so sweet. Jen's um, on vacation next week. So. Oh, excellent. Right. So the thing is that this is where you want to put your um, card. And at the moment, it's an envelope and you can't get much in there, okay? That goes without saying. So what I'm going to do is cut down each side and that will give me this down here, a sort of cascading, that cascading look. You do have a choice, however. You can slice the top so as you can put your pocket in the top if you want to. I'm going like that again. Um, I didn't want to, I want all mine on the side, but you know, that's just a choice, another choice for you to think about. So I've got my paper stuck on here, so I'm just going to take my scissors and just slice up there. You can do it with your chopping board, cutting knife, rotary cutter, anything you like, as long as you just get a sliver off the edge of there. I mean, that's it. It's a sliver. Okay. It's half or nothing. Um, which now means that that is open and available. <laughs> so let's just stick another couple of pieces of this paper down. And you'll sort of see where I'm going. Well, you can see where I'm going now, can't you? I mean, let's be honest. You can see what's going to happen here. We're going to end up with a little envelope journey. 
It's so easy peasy, this. Once you've seen it. You think, oh, how come I didn't come up with that before? And I think we probably all have come up with a version of this, you know, where you stick one envelope inside the other. Um, but it was just those particular ladies, Carol Tinson and Crafted by Norma, that showed me what to do. And I just loved it. So you want this sort of square on with that one, really. Looks better if it is. Ooh, out a little bit to that. There we go. Lovely, and I'll stick the other side on them. This is just stuck onto that, and I hope it's not gonna whoops, show up too badly. No, I think we're all right, we'll be all right. Are you bored yet of watching me stick papers in this envelope? <gasps> Just say if you are. I understand. I thought I'd taken all the sort of laborious bits out by cutting and inking everything that uh, I was going to use. But I forgot that this was going to be a bit tedious for you, I'm sorry. slice the end off that one there's you can do that you can slice the ends off anytime I don't know why I choose to put my papers down first and then slice them no idea no rhyme or reason let's just check that I can get in there Yep. If you put too much glue on the flaps of your envelopes when you're folding them over, when you come to this part, you might not be able to open it properly. Just use a friendly persuader and get in and just persuade them to open properly. Um, but if you glue them like I showed you, you'll be fine. I mean, you can see it already. It's coming together as a really cute little journal already. I'm getting it quite excited. I've had a message from Anne Kenny, a private message, and... Well, those of you that know her will know that she's had a even more horrible than everybody else, 2020. It's been never-ending for her. Um, and now she's got another problem. And so she's missing out all her lives and she's she really wants to be joining in. But um, hopefully soon she will be back um, and we can welcome her back. Uh, the other person that I haven't seen or heard from is Pat Fleet. And I'm getting increasingly worried about, about Pat. Um, I don't want to message her because I know if she wanted me, she would message me. Um, but I, I would like to hear from her. And Shaz is having a bit of a rough time around as well. Yeah, poor old Shaz. Shaz is a long-term friend of mine and I value a friendship enormously and uh, she's, oh dear me, she's rightly gone to pot these last couple of days. She's managed to join us on the lives but she's not herself at all. Um, so for those of you who feel like it, can you send some positivity their way please? Sharon Davis says, I think you and Miss Ref could even make watching paint dry fun. <laughs> oh dear. We used to we used to paint furniture on lives, didn't we? 
and then it you know there were parts of it where you had to wait for it to dry so it's a bit like doing a song and dance routine while you're waiting for it to dry no it wasn't i never did a song and dance routine <laughs> <laughs> well not on camera anyway oh dear me And you used to do a lot of acrylic painting, of course. And yes. It take time to dry as well. Yeah, I did used to do a lot of acrylic painting. That's where I met up with Susan Hall, another member of ours, uh, who's a, a, turned into a very good artist. So a lot of you I've known for a long time. Uh, some of you I've just met, but I feel like I've known you for a long time. It's funny, isn't it? So I'm just going to trim that one. There we go. Check it opens. Do you open? Oh, oh, yeah, there we go. We're all right. Lovely. Now then, when you come to the back, oh no, I'm not at the back yet. Don't get excited yet, guys. <laughs> More drying to watch. I'm one short anyway. I thought that. After all Often. my planning. I'm one short. Do you want me to uh, whiz another one off? If you would, that would be great, and then I can leave it all at a sensible place. So, just around it quickly. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I can do that. I've still got the red in. I can do that. You might have heard me say last week or the week before that we'd bought a new printer. Well, it. I mean, it is a new printer, but it's just new to us. It's not... You know, it's not a brand new printer, uh, but it's a brother A3. And I do use A3 print, the, the existing A3 printer we've got, I use quite a lot. But it's kind of just about giving up the ghost, if I'm honest with you. Um, it's becoming increasingly delicate. So, um, actually, <laughs> oddly enough, somebody put the A3 printer for sale on Facebook Marketplace and uh, we said yes we'd have it thank you and when we went to get it it was the same girl that we'd bought the original a3 printer off so obviously we're just following on picking up her, her cast offs which is fine anyway we got it home um and she said she'd taken the ink out of it because it was just sort of standing there and she didn't uh, want to leave the ink in it uh, we got it home and we put we just used cheap um cartridges not not the original maker's cartridge, you know, brother cartridges are in them. We just use uh, cheap ink. So we put the cheap ink cartridges in uh, when they arrived in the post, uh, tried it, and it, it just wouldn't work. And I couldn't believe that the girl had sold us something that didn't work. She just didn't seem that type of person. So we ordered some cheap cartridges, but more expensive, if you know what I mean. Um, put them in and it works a charm and it's such a better printer than either of the other well the laser is a good printer obviously but uh, the Canon that I've got the A4 this A3 is just so much better it brings out the colours it's, oh, it's great so I've been it's using a it a lot series. professional series well the girl that we bought it off is a graphic illustrator so I'm guessing that she needs it to be pretty good and she told us the inks that she uses thank you um, which are from Cartridge Ink, ink Cartridge Ink. Uh, and, you know, as I say, they're not as cheap as the real cheapies, but they're pretty good. And they work. I wouldn't have believed that ink could make such a difference. I thought it was all down to the printer. But it's not. And another good selling point was the fact it had an A3 scanner. Yes, it has an A3 scanner. And it also, you can also feed really thick card through it. So we're set up hopefully for a, for a while. Right, so that's all of the, those papers put in. I need one for here. Don't put one on the back. That's unnecessary because it's going to be covered with something else. So don't put your one on the back. But I'm just going to cut that one if I can remember the dimensions. I think it's four and a quarter by six and an eighth. Four and a quarter. This 
what you get for being so well planned. Something go from six, <coughs> six and an eighth. Odd measurements, but that's what they are. There we go. <coughs> so I'll get my inking board out and I used the candied apple. That's right. Which one did I use? Let's have a look on the back. Is that red? Hmm, don't know. Might be brown. What colour is that? No, that's brown. Must be this one. So just in from the edge over the sides and you can put as, go as far across as you like. Of late I'm really liking this wide sort of border on them. You remember I did it with a holly jolly as well. With a pink I came in a long way. I like it. It, it almost sort of vignettes the centre. And I love these brushes. I just absolutely love them. Love them. Apparently you can get them in Poundland now. Uh, so if the Poundland near you is open, get yourself in there and get some because you'll love them. So I'm just going to use walnut stain with my walnut stain dabber and just go around the edge. Just so it stands out, as I say, against the envelope. Just makes it look a little bit more distressed, doesn't it? Hope none of you are distressed. <laughs> Dark brown around the edges. So there we go. That's ready to sew around now. So I'll see you at the sewing machine. You're right, Jen, it's always tricky at the corner to know when another stitch is too far. Okay, so that didn't take too long. Chop my ends off since I found the tie off stitch on my sewing machine. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, so I can glue that on. I'm just checking that's the rose that's growing up there, so we're all right. The coral. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Julie from Camellia Craft Designs, for. Uh, reintroducing me to collar it really is fabulous glue i like it a lot and it's not a fraction you know it's a fraction of the price of uh fab um what do you call it fabric tank which is always good isn't it guys because crafting is not cheap And Mr. F has got a great bit. Is it a gallon you've got? 
Gallon. I've got a gallon of aliens. Oh, yeah. gallon of aliens and a litre of coral. All oh, right, okay. So I'll just pop this into the back while it's still wet. There we go. Aha, uh -huh. I've shown them. That's what you call a tub of glue. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to use that? <laughs> Handy pocket size. <laughs> right, so that's onto there. And as I say, uh, don't put anything on the back page because it's going to be covered up with something. So there we are. That's all that done. I'm just going to press that down like that. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, I haven't cut my back, my back cover. It's got, you can make it so it doesn't have a card in if you want it, this back one. But I like, I like to have the five in. I'm going to have to cut that off with my rotary cutter. I'm just plain useless with scissors, simple as. Okay, so that should open as well. Yep, there we are. Right then, so we now need to turn our attention to the cards that go in there. And as you know, I'm going to use these ones. And I want to select the five that cascade. So that's one there. Uh, that, I think that's the next one. One, two, one that's a middle one. How much were these uh, cards, Mr. Off? Do you remember? Three, uh, that one's a four. I'm not sure, I think I got those ones off eBay. Ah, right. And this one's a five. So let's just check that we've got them all. Yep, all the way down there, that's perfect. Now, did I ink them? I think I did, you know. Let's just have a check and see. No, I think I inked them after I'd put the paper on. So that's all right, we can do that. So the pictures that I want to use uh, on here are these ones and they're from Antique Paper Papery. I think I showed you at the time when I bought them, uh, the ones that they were, I think they were 58p. But they come, this is a different set but the same idea, they come like that. So you pay your 58p and you get this JPEG back with nine, sometimes there's eight, you've got an advert in the middle, um, of these images. And, you know, what the question I want to know is, do you all know how to resize these individually? Um, because if you do, that's, that's great. If not, I'll ask Mr. F if he'll do a quick um, tutorial on how to split these up and resize them for the project that you want to do. Because you can take each one of these individually and make it up. Well, you could make it A3 if you wanted to. Um, or you could make it this size that I've made mine for my cards. Um, but if you just print it out like that, then you're stuck with them just that size. And they're not, I mean, they're nice little journaling cards, but they're not the most useful. Uh, so if you need some help with that, please uh, mention it now is a good time. Um, and we'll see if I can persuade Mr. F to do it. And fill in my cup there. Just reading what you're saying. Mr. F, do a tutorial. I can never do it either. I'd love to learn. There you go. It's nicely put your weekend in, hasn't it? Well, one day. Yep, yeah, so I've got some book binding to do. Yeah, but you could have done that last week. You were slack.
Well, I got brown ink on my nose. What do you think now I would tell you if you did? I do, look. <laughs> You've let me carry on with brown ink on my nose. It's what happens when you slack. <laughs> oh no, I can't believe it. Anyway, carrying on. So these are the images. It's crafters fake tan. <laughs> Vintage photo. Yeah. So these are the images that I've chosen and actually looking at them, they're pretty tight fit. But that's okay, I'm alright with that. So they just need um, sticking down. I've sewn around all of these as well because I was on a sewing bent this morning. Uh, Collal again. And after I've got them stuck down, I will uh, ink them. Might as well ink the whole thing together. Oops, a daisy. So is it just Terry and Jean? Or what? That want the video on resizing. I could do a resizing myself. How to make a thinner person. That would be good. There's probably an app for that. How to make a thinner person. Mm. I think I have one. You have to enter food you've eaten and I only enter the good stuff. I don't enter any of the naughty stuff. <laughs> 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 it only works if you scan everything. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there we are. We've got that on that side. It looks really nice. I love those cute little bunnies. Um, I've only got two creatures, so I might keep them apart. I've got that box with holly on it, a big ding dong bell, and a horseshoe. I'll use that. I'm going to put that one in the last one. So I don't want it all, cre all the creatures together. So this is your task for today, guys. Find yourself five similarly sized envelopes. Uh, ink around them. Print some paper off and cut it to size. Make your envelope journal. <laughs> I've done all this twice today, so you can definitely do it. Um, and stick your papers on. You don't need to do this if you haven't got appropriate designs and you need Mr. F to help you with the, with the resizing. You can see I've inked that quite a long way in. I, I, I do like it, but I mean, you don't have to do that. It's just a kind of personal preference that I've found fairly recently. So that's one and two. Lucky horseshoe maybe in the middle. In the States, I'm, I'm sure that you do. Do you have shopping channels, crafty shopping channels? Jan, Janet Ann, has got me onto watching the shopping channels. I asked her about, you know, those beautiful die cuts that she sent me. Um, I can't remember the name of them now. What's the name of them? Charisma. Charisma, that's right. I asked her about those and she messaged me one day and said, oh, the Charisma's on Create and Craft now if you want to see it. So I went to Create and Craft, had a look at the Charisma and then I was crafting. So I just left the TV on in the background and it started rolling onto the next program and the next and the next. And they do demonstrations and oh, I'm, just, I'm hooked now. I'm hooked on blinking shopping channels. I don't buy anything, I hasten to add, because I actually find them quite expensive. Um, they're certainly not cheap. So there we are, that's three. Uh, 
Then the belt. So I've done a fair bit of sticking of paper today. Which I appreciate is not the most exciting thing in the world. But we're nearly there now. You'll be glad to know. Look at the colour of my thumb, it's disgusting. Looks like I smoke about 60 cigarettes a day. There we go, that's all right. Which I don't, <laughs> incidentally. <laughs> there we go, one, one left. So on the back of mine, I chose to put lined coffee stained paper. You could put any, you could put nothing. Uh, you could journal on the craft card easily. I just decided to put coffee stained paper in because what I would normally do with a journaling card. Um, but you can leave it with nothing or whatever you fancy putting in it. Lovely. Right, so that's them. Now, when it comes to the charms, Hilda, a couple of weeks ago, helped me out with by sending me some charms, some Christmas charms to use on the Holly Jolly. Uh, and I ordered some from my good friend Ali. Um, and they came this week. So if I can find them, yeah, here they are. I'll show you them. Hilda's were, were great, snowflakes and gingerbread men, candy canes, perfect. Um, and I, to be honest, I didn't think these from um, Ali would come very quickly. So I was surprised when they arrived. But let me just get a piece of paper so I can show you these. There's um, a little... Uh, I don't know what he is. Snowman. snowman. He's a happy snowman. Uh, a snowflake. A Christmas tree. Candy cane. Christmas stocking. Rudolph. A snowflake, slightly larger one. A little jingle bell. It's red and it jingles. It's, I mean, it's not enough to get on your wick, but it does just, here, it just does jingle. Uh, then some bells that have got sort of enamel on them. They're really pretty. And then this, look at this. It's a bauble and it's got starry, tiny sequins in it. Fabulous, eh? So I'm going to be employing some of those on this uh, journal that we're doing now i probably won't put that on because <laughs> i'm probably going to hang on to that for the rest of my life actually thinking oh no it's too good for that it's too good for that whatever so um we'll see i'll probably go for the stocking the tree uh the snowman rudolph and a larger snowflake probably i'll leave those ones there nice though aren't they i can't remember how much they were but i'm sure they weren't expensive uh, miranda says they're not from ali i sent them to you lol oh no that's why the blinking came so fast 
Miranda! I'm so sorry about that. There was nothing in it to say. Thank you so much. You are so kind, Miranda. You send me so many lovely things. And I'm absolutely enchanted by these. I really am. Um, how awful of me. I'm so sorry, Miranda. It just didn't say anything, so I, presume it, I presumed it was me. <laughs> I presumed I'd sent myself something. <laughs> Thank you, Miranda. And Hilda for the other ones. Right, so I think what we need to do now is put the, um, can't get over that Miranda, that's awful, it's terrible. Uh, I just need some coffee paper, coffee stained paper, that's what I mean. Mm, I might need that for the journaling. Oh well, I'll use it anyway. I'll ask Mr F if he'll do me some new stuff in the morning. What, what, what? I'm just saying if I use this then when it comes to the journal in the middle I won't have any of this left. I don't know what happened to the lined paper. Right. See how organised this has now not become. It did not go in the, the yeah. stuff. Yeah that stuff, that'll do grand. That's just the job. Yeah, this stuff. I bought a ream of it. Um, so I'm quite keen to use it up, really. Right, so I need five, and I need them to be... How tall? Can't get over that, Miranda. I'm so sorry that I didn't know they'd come from you, but there's nothing in. Right, that measures six inches, so I'd like it to be about five and three quarters. So... Let's put them both the same way, like that. Five and three quarters. Miranda says it's her fault she didn't put a note in. She forgot. Oh, thank you so much for them. I love that little purple. Like I say, I'm probably going to have it forever and ever and ever. Because no project's ever going to be good enough to use that on. So that's five and three quarters. Chop that along there. See if I can get five and three quarters out of here as well. Five and three quarters. Wow, just. Pop those all together. See how wide I need to make them. Uh, there. I would like them to be um, three and three quarters. Three and three quarters I'd be happy with. Just make sure they're all lined up properly. Three and three quarters. Actually, I'm going to take it from the other side and see if I can avoid that bit where the hole is. I don't know if it will work out that way, but it might. Three and three quarters. There we go. I've missed the bit with a hole in, so that's good. And there we have them, ready to stick in. And I can get away with just putting the bit with a blue line. I can either use it as a sort of point of difference or I can have them all like that. So I'm not going to sew these. I mean, they're just jotting paper on the back of a card. They don't need to be sewn. But if you want to sew them, sew away. I've done my fair share today, so I'm not going to sew these. The other thing is it just thickens them ever so slightly when you sew them. I mean, it's just the thickness of a stitch, but it's probably, I'm happy not to sew them. Uh, 
and I'm happy to lose that blue line as well. I don't, I'm not really keen on it. I'm just going to use plain lines. This is all really down to personal preference, isn't it? How, how you stain your coffee paper. I mean, some people stain them really, really dark. Some people put big splotches on them um, to each their own, I say. We've all got our own way of doing things and things that we like and thank goodness that we have. A good press down. There we go. If you wanted to, you could put a little stamp on the back and I think that might add to it. I might do that in the fullness of time. I haven't sorted a stamp out to do that with, so um, I'm not going to do it today. But I think I do that quite often on the back of journaling cards, just put a little stamp. Um, it just looks like you've taken, taken time to do it. That is the other thing I notice about these shopping channels. Mostly they're selling things for card makers and, you know, they'll do a demonstration and say, there you go, it's as easy as that, it only takes five minutes and you can make a hundred cards. Why? Why? Why do you want to make them all so quickly? I love taking my time over things and getting it exactly what I, you know, how I want it. I don't know, I guess maybe if you're making cards to sell... I guess you want to get them shifty on. Right, so who's saying what? The best free email provider. <laughs> We've gone off peace just a bit. Good to know that about Gmail. What about Gmail? What's wrong with it? People started talking about computers when she said they were doing a tutorial on uh, resizing. Uh, they got carried away with tech stuff. Tech stuff. So fundamentally that is the plan you, you can see how to do it you know how to do it anyway um, if any of you are watching the YouTube channel that uh, are new and don't know about it we have a group over on Facebook called Miss Junk, <laughs> Miss Junk, that's me, Miss Junk, Miss paint -a -Lot's Junk Journal Group, is what it's called, Miss paint -a -Lot's Junk Journal Group, and you're very welcome to pop over and join, you'll see all the people that you've met here today, I'm sure, um, and we, this week we've had a nice take five challenge, and we'll have another one next, comes out next Tuesday, um, we do all sorts of things, really nice group, and you'd be very welcome there. So here we are. I'm. Uh, I've got three of these done back and front. Ooh, that one goes in the back. There we go. Um, and all I need to do is finish the other two off, ink around the the card, and onto the the paper at the back, uh, which you can do. I know you can do. And I, I'm going to put some holes here with some eyelets in. Well. I'm going to ask Mr. F to do it because when I did it the other time, I um, was a bit overly keen. <laughs> uh, and you saw me the other day putting jump rings on, so you know how to do that. So by the by tomorrow, you should have your journal with all the papers in it. 
all of your cards done. This is in fantasy land. You don't have to do this at all. So they all fit into there like so. And then when we come back tomorrow, I can, I'm not going to put those in there because I've got to get them out straight out again anyway to ink them. So you know where they go. Um, tomorrow when, when I join you again, we'll be looking at constructing the pockets and the belly band, tummy tucks and flips and whatever that we're going to put in it. Um, day after that, we'll probably get on to actually making the embellishments to put into the journal. And then we've got the cover to make. So it's it's going to be a little bit of a long process, not massively long, but um, just processes every day. So bite size. So I know you can do it and keep up. OK, so I think we're I think we're all right for today. I think that that's a nice project for you. I hope some of you decide to do it because it really is nice uh, when it's all finished and complete. And hopefully when I'm finished, I'll have three. I'll have the Edith Holden, I'll have the Holly Jolly and I'll have a shabby chic one. That's the plan. <laughs> so, yeah, join me tomorrow and we'll put the build, carry on with the construction of the things. So what can I say? You've been marvellous. Uh, you always are. <laughs> what thickness eyelets do you use? You know, the, the, the thickness. Oh, ah, the yeah. Depth. Ah, Sometimes yeah. Sometimes when you put them on thinner paper, they're not tight, are they? Yeah, that's right. I don't know. We just bought some from a car boot. And we use what's in there. I really don't know, Terry. It's a really good question, but I'm afraid I don't know the answer. If if they are loose, you can get ones with washers, can't you? Yeah, we used those for years, didn't we? The ones with washers. If you use the ones with washers, then it does take up that extra little bit yeah. of room. So I'd recommend the ones with washers if you... Yeah. Um, where are our ones with the washers? Those, yeah, the, these ones here, they come with, they come with these washers, as Mr. F says, that go on the back. So you put this on the front, then you, then your paper, then you slide that on and then you crimp it. So it's. Spreads the load and takes up a little of extra room. Yeah. But the ones we've been using of late, I've been using, uh, these are 316s, I've been using eighth ones. Tiddy little ones. Yeah, which is, uh, are they eighth? Yeah, these ones, the teeny ones. Uh, and I'm really not sure what size the back is. I mean, it looks comparable to me, but that... You know those I use a washer with, so I don't. I don't know. I really don't know. Give it a try and see. See what happens. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I'll try and be really organised for tomorrow. I really will try. Um, and I'll see you at two o'clock tomorrow, Sunday, UK time. Um, set your alarms if it's early in the morning. Um, have an afternoon nap if it's late at night. <laughs> Either way, I'd like to see you. So take care, please stay safe and spare a thought for the members of our group that are struggling a little bit at the moment. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow.